also the fact that you you can you can really look at the little cue or the little uh, hymnal holder in front of you. You might see a program for the week. We just ask you kind of take care of those. Uh, t- you'll have to share in your rows, but basically that kind of tells you what to expect for the week. Who's going to be speaking? Who's going to be doing the acting and leading out with uh, each night? And so our prayer for this student week of prayer. Listen up. Our prayer for this student week of prayer is that God will do something amazing. That's what I've been praying this weekend. I pray that he will show up, and the title for this week is Touched by Jesus. And it's truly our prayer that you'll be touched by Jesus, that I'll be touched by Jesus, that we will be impacted by the story of Jesus Christ. So before we begin tonight, I ask that you would bow your heads, and let's just have a prayer uh, for this week of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that we live in a place where we can come here and freely worship you and freely uh, reflect on your son Jesus. And so this week, Lord, as we do that, as we spend an extra hour each night um, just watching a skit of of your life and hearing the word from, from our peers, Lord, we just pray that you would protect this campus. We pray that you would be a part of this campus. We pray that you would Uh, be a part of this church, that you would be a part of this sanctuary, Lord, that you would live in our hearts this week. And Lord, may we be touched again by the story of Jesus Christ, and and may uh, may we just again give our hearts and our lives to you. And so, Lord, it's our prayer that you would do something amazing this week, and that you would impact us in a powerful way. And that is our prayer, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will bless his people with peace. So please stand with us as we sing Build Your Kingdom Here. <coughs> Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us we pray. Unveil while we're made. Come set Stop. 
Many dream has died. Like a tree planted by the water, we never will run dry. So live in water, flowing through the deep earth, for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with one We're digging deep to know our Father's heart. And to the world we're reaching out to show them who you
Peace is hard to understand if you don't have a relationship with Jesus. If you don't trust him completely to guide your life. A 12-year-old girl who is dying of cancer but tells her mom that it's okay because she trusts Jesus just doesn't make sense to most people. But, this, but to someone who has faith in God, it is synonymous with the word peace, a calm reliance on God. The Bible story seems to indicate that a centurion whose servant was sick, was at peace when he approached Jesus and asked him to heal his beloved worker. He believed in Jesus and his power to do anything he commanded. In fact, after the centurion presented his request to God and told him that he knew Jesus could simply speak a word and the servant would be healed. Jesus told the centurion that he had not found faith like this in all of Israel. The centurion may have had faith and peace about the situation, but we have no idea how the servant was reacting. Maybe he was struggling with trusting. Maybe he worried about the outcome of his paralysis. It's hard to have peace in the midst of a storm, but when you are waiting for the light of day to shine again, but when we walk with Jesus, we can have peace. Um, no, I am not a gossip, but so much has happened, and there's no one to tell. The master has gone to fetch his teacher, and the mistress is completely, oh, here she comes, but whatever she says, you didn't hear it from me, but he's not going to make it.
I'm guessing Augusta was just in here. Ah, must have gone to get water. It's good for her to get out. She's like a bird that can never stop its chatter. Ever since father left, there's been no one for her to talk to, really. See, father took some of the servants with him, and the ones he left here are good workers, so there's no time for frivolous talk. Besides, no one's really in the mood to talk. Justice isn't doing well, and that's why father had to leave. Things are desperate now. The teacher from Galilee, the one they call Jesus, he's our last hope. They say he can heal the sick and perform other miracles. They say he is the son of God. Father just had to go to save justice and to... Can you keep a secret? Well, we've been worshiping this Hebrew God for some time now. Father became a believer after being stationed at the river to keep an eye on the Baptist. And he saw this teacher there, Jesus, and said he heard the voice of God. I've never seen him like that before. Father, I mean, so changed, so moved. It was like a fire lit up inside him that he could no longer contain. And everyone in the house has been worshiping with us. The ones we didn't think we could trust were sent away. But it's dangerous, especially for a man in charge of so many soldiers like Father. A centurion is expected to represent the Roman Empire like a good citizen. So he could be, he could be killed for treason, but what he says it's worth the risk. And I have to say, after coming to know this God myself, I agree. But there's still so much we don't know. That's what has Justice so bothered right now, besides feeling horrible. What will happen to him if he dies? Where will his body go? Will he just die and that's it? Sometimes I think he's worried that maybe this God isn't what we want him to be. And Father has faith in us for speaking out this teacher. And I? Well, I do too. But Justice, I just don't always know what to tell him. Well, I, best I, I guess I better go find Augusta before she talks too much. So can you keep an eye on him for me? Thank you. Doing well. No! Shh, I'm right here, right here. No, Augusta, it's not time. It's not time. He'll be all right. Water. I need water. Thank you, Hera. You are so good to me. Your father be proud of everything you have done. Take care of everything in his absence. Well, I'm glad I've been able to help you. You're like family to us, Justice. A second father to me. You've been here longer than I have, and father loves you. We all love you. <laughs> Hera, I can't feel my arm, my leg, and my side. It's crawling up to my face. Why does your father delay? What if the teacher can't help me? What's going to happen to me? Hera, I'm afraid. It's, it's all right, you know, it's, it's going to be fine. Uh, father wouldn't go so far and risk so much if this man wasn't the son of God. I know he will help us. I know God cares. We just have to trust him. He will give you peace.
Hera? Hera, I'm healed. I'm healed. The teacher, he's the one. He's the one. Augusta. I've been healed. Augusta! I've been healed. I've been healed. He has healed me.
How you guys doing? That was great, wasn't it? All right, before we get into this, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for everybody that was here tonight and put in their time and effort into making this just that good. I want you to be with me as I speak to them for you. And bless everything that I say. Amen. <clears throat> the centurion's servant. This story has always intrigued me. Just because of its complexity. And when you analyze it, it boils down into such simplicity. It's the story of a centurion caught in a raging sea storm when one of his beloved falls ill. And I think that's true for all of us in the fact that we all have turmoil raging inside of all of us. I will bring a story to your attention. It's about an um, Inuit tribe up in uh, Alaska. It's about a young, young fisher, young, young warrior. Becomes a, uh, very funny. <laughs> but all they did was fish up there. You can't, you can't. He comes back one day after a hard day's work. And he meets the elder who's sitting around the fire. And they're talking. You know, he's talk, talking about his life. And the issue of right and wrong comes up. And he's talking to the elder and he says, what do I do? And Joe looks at him and he tells him this scenario. He says, inside you, there are two wolves fighting. An evil wolf who feeds on anger, hatred, greed, anxiety. And a good wolf, who is full of light, who feeds on justice, kindness, peace. The young warrior looks at it and says, he's confused. And he says, well, which, if they're fighting, which one is winning? And the other looks at him and says, the one that you feed is the one that will win. But going back to our story about the centurion, first of all, a little history on what a centurion actually was in the Roman Empire. You see, becoming a centurion was not an easy task. Many, many battles had to be fought. Many very close calls with death to get to where he was. To such status in the Roman Empire. Such power. I want to read to you a little bit of the passage from, in the, from the story of the Bible. It says, when Jesus had finished saying all this, in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion's servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some, el some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. <clears throat> this man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I do not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man of great authority. With soldiers under me, I tell this one, go, and he goes. I tell this one, come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. So a man of this status, he is very self-reliant, I guess you could say. It's all about what I've done to achieve this. What have I done? Look where I am. But then the situation arises where somebody he loves, their life is at risk, and he is powerless. This is what stirs the seeds of his heart, instills doubt that festers. And he says to himself, why can't I do, I, my entire life I've been full of myself, and yet this time I cannot do anything. But he hears of a man, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who, he's heard the tales, he's heard the stories, he can make the blind see, he can make the lame walk. And he says, maybe, just maybe, if I talk to this guy, maybe things will turn out all right. So, 
gives up his status, not literally, but he gives it up and he goes to Jesus, a Jew, and he says, help me, I need your help. I cannot do this by myself. So I want to read the rest of this story to you. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him and turned to the crowd following him and said, I tell you, I have not found greater faith even in Israel. God's chosen people cannot find greater faith. And the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant healed. So by giving up his power, handing it to Jesus, and saying, I need you in my life. That is when peace was instilled. That is when the sick can walk again. That is when the sea that is churning inside of us can be quelled. It's true for all, for all of us, even today. Where, where it says in um, John 16, 33. Let me get to there real quick. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have, a, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Like I was saying, it's true in today's world. If you've got maybe a class you're having problems with, or you're, so you're in a relationship, whether it be friendship, girlfriend, boyfriend, and there's, there's trouble, take that. Take that seed. Do not let it implant itself in your heart. Take it. Give it to Jesus. Because in this life, tragedies are going to happen. They happen to everybody. Unavoidable. I... Go to uh, Philippians 4 7 if you got your Bible. Yeah. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, to finish up, I want to issue you guys a challenge. Whatever you have, that's in, inside you, whether it's, whatever it may be, don't let it fester inside you. Just give it to Jesus. So if you go back to the dorm tonight, go back to your house, just pray to him and say, take this from me. Let me have peace. Just like the centurion, as he, you know, walked up, his servants walked up to Jesus and said, I need you. My servant needs you. So we all need Jesus. And he can give you peace. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this week of prayer where we can take a break from school and just focus on you. I want to thank you for everyone here tonight. I want you to bless them. I want you to give them peace for whatever, they, whatever problems they might have. Thank you again for everything you've given us. And just... Be with everyone throughout this week. Amen. notice the theme for this week is touched by Jesus and our theme song is called Christ is enough and I'm sure everyone's been touched by him at some point in their life whether you've realized it yet or not um, 
and once you have and once you realize it, and once you come to the realization that you can't go back and live your life the way you once have, then you'll realize that Christ is enough for every situation, like with what Jake just said. In the midst of your trials, in the midst of the storm, he will give you peace. He'll give you whatever you need. He'll give you whatever you ask for, and I know that from experience. So please stand with us and learn the song with us, Christ is Enough.
uh, please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, wonderful Monday. It's a good start to Student Week of Prayer, Lord. Um, I just pray that you bless everyone with what what's coming this week, Lord. Um, just be with us throughout the rest of this week and help us to be strong throughout the rest of this year and just to keep you in our minds and hearts. In your name I pray, amen.